New all-time highs. What's going on, guys? Welcome on into the Stock Trends channel. We are back. The market has just recently closed for the day on Friday, and we are here to do a little bit of analysis. It's been a little bit. I uh, I had last weekend a 50-mile ultra marathon, my fourth in the past nine months, which is uh, pretty cool to say as someone who just really started running about a year, year and a half ago, I'd say, more consistently. But we have broken to all-time highs. Spy closes the day just under 580. I can't believe I'm really saying that, but hey, we are. We here we are. We are now breaking out of what seems to be potentially a consolidation area for a couple of weeks that we kind of bounce around in for second half of September and first half of October kind of. And and now we're breaking out a little bit. We had the news as we get CPI, we had PPI. We had I believe what else we had this week. We can go back and take a peek at it. Uh we had the Fed meeting minutes. So, yeah, we had a couple things. So, that's cool. That's where the market stands right now. Um, if you jump around and take a peek at other, you know, sectors, if you want to say, QQQ, kind of gearing up for potentially maybe a breakout to new highs for the uh, the year. Well, it's got a little ways to go. It's going to break this level right here and then make a push. So it's got some, it's got some room to go. Uh, the Dow, though, I believe is at an all-time high. Yes, look at that beautiful move in the Dow. Very nice move. Very strong close on the Dow, too. By the way, notable, notable. Um, I drew this line in here, and then we had this breakout, and then we had this res respected level again. So this was kind of like a weird false break, and then it finally broke through. Now it seems like be going for the next leg on the Dow, and then the Russell, the Russell. Welcome to the party, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have broken, or well, maybe we're, we're starting to break out. What seems to be maybe a bull flag or a little bit of a, a wedge, whatever you want to call it, a channel. And it's getting going now. I want to see it above 225, but above there we get some we get some open waters. I think on the Russell, so it looks like it's pretty good. And, and maybe you know there's something to be said there on the Russell. Um, big picture. Let's talk about before we get into chart requests. Let's talk about uh, fear and greed and all that stuff. Sentiment, which I like to get into first, or at least when I can. Um, and as always, leave any chart requests in the comments below. Happy to talk about them in future videos, and uh, we'll definitely dive deeper into some of those guys. So 49% bullish, 20% bearish, seemingly a decent amount in the middle, 30%. But this is a pretty bullish um, reading. I mean, straight up, right? Pretty bullish, you know, not a lot of bears, good amount of bulls and, you know, a good chunk in between, but, you know, not a lot of bears. So interesting, I thought. Fear and greed here. It means refresh to make sure we're good because we're so close to extreme greed. We still didn't get there. 74, we are at the top end of greed. Not surprising. We did see a little rollover in strength and breadth, which is kind of partially why we're not there. And we did see a little bump up in put calls ratios. So that's that. And then also the VIX, by the way, is an interesting spot. The VIX is actually up quite a bit. It's around 20, a little over 20 bucks when despite the market at all time highs, which is interesting given how we're seeing higher lows and kind of higher highs past couple weeks on the VIX, which you wouldn't necessarily think we would see in a scenario where we are at all-time highs, but yeah, that's what we got. So we're just talking what we got. So there's that. That's the story going on right now. Um, other than that, you have to dive into the 10-year. We got to dive into that because we haven't talked about that in a while. The 10-year last we checked did not make this move because I hadn't been here in a while to make the video. So last, I believe we did not see the 10-year making this ex big extension, but now it is. If you were to extend the trend line across, which we kind of, you know, now have done here, if you extend the trend line across, you know, you're really at an interesting spot because if we break through here, maybe there's more, a lot more room to the upside. And if not, this could be a really good, nice rollover point for the 10 year because we kind of extended to the downside way, you know, below that trend line for a period of time. And now we've finally made our way back. So for those of you who like trend lines, maybe there's a smile on your face. I love trends, to be honest. I don't trade them, but, well, I don't trade trend lines, basically. I trade horizontal lines most of the time, like 99% of the time. Um, if I'm usually veering from my system and I probably am losing, then I'll be maybe trading a trend line. Um, not that I'm against them. Uh, I, I just, it's just not how my my approach works right now. I don't have data on it, so like it's not really worth trading it right now unless I'm willing to step back and trade in a smaller account or trade uh, trade a paper account gather the data and then come back to me and say, well, we actually have good data here. Let's trade it. You know, that's kind of my view. Uh, okay. So getting you know, long winded answers here, uh, but that's the deal there. The dollar is also up 
as of late as well, bouncing right off a beautiful, beautiful zone. We talked about this zone a while or a lot, and it's an absolutely beautiful spot. It has bounced beautifully off that level. We thought, wait, we got some weakness going into the bottom here, and then said, psych, we're bouncing, baby, and there's nothing you can do about it. The dollar is bouncing back up. However, gold, silver looking pretty good, I think, overall. Let's take a peek at those guys. Let's take a peek. Gold, we got to talk about oil too because it's been also pretty big. Gold's, you know, really strong day to finish off the week and right back up into position where it maybe is looking at its all-time high here soon yet again. Gold's in a very nice looking uh, trend. You can maybe make the argument that you got a little downtrend there. Maybe you make the argument. Yep, yeah, I think so. Let's see. Okay, let me jump over to, no, well, let's cover that in a second. Let's go to silver first. Here she is. Took me a second to load her up. Yeah, broke out to new highs of the year twice. Both of those times, big upper wicks, but potentially putting in a higher low. If we can break, if we can put a higher low in here and get back up there, I think we have a better chance of making a bigger move and extension to the upside. So watching silver, if it can break above thirty two fifties again. Otherwise, if this low goes at thirty bucks, yeah, thirty ten or so, not a great look. I'd say thirty dollars roughly, give or take, is the spot to watch. But if it, that goes, not the best of looks on silver. Uh, okay, let's go back up and take a peek at oil. So with little, not little, uh, the Middle East tensions going on, I think this is, in, in my opinion, in a void. You have really not a lot of clarity at all over the past two years, two years of oil. You could have made the argument that, yes, you know, you had this clarity here. Yeah, no longer with this move back up. And then you got the tensions and you're right in the middle of the volume profile. I, to me, this is just asking for trouble right now with potential news headline release. Like, you know, you just got a, a lot of headline risk. So it's risky in my view. Right in the middle of the range. I mean, kind of. It's just, a, it's an avoid in my, if you ask me. Bitcoin, kind of a similar story here, although getting closer to the top end of the range. If this builds a higher low here, bodes pretty well for a push back up into this area, as in maybe we want to break this finally, dare we say. I mean, that'd be crazy because it seems like it hasn't been able to do so in so long. We were talking about Bitcoin back up in March, literally from March to now, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. It's like seven months, seven months, seven months of essentially nothing happening. Now, a lot has kind of happened, but like, Okay, here's the look, right? Zoom out. And that's like, you know, it hasn't moved very much. Okay, it's, this is a good range, but like there's no clarity on that. So that's kind of what we got on Bitcoin. Whether you, you know, whether you like it or not. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't see too much there. That's interesting. Me until you break that level. Clorox. Clorox, this guy's got earnings. Now we're going to get into earnings season here soon. So get ready for that. They got earnings on Wednesday, the 30th, about two and a half weeks or so from right now. Popped up to this highs, pulled back. Seemingly right now, you've got, I would suspect, this area acting as now resistance, if you want to get cute. You know, up into here, 161s. Good volume support, pretty much where it bounced, just below where it bounced right here down into the 150s, mid 150s, very good volume support. So I would say also with these highs here, I'd say that, that that's a good spot to see it hold. If it holds the mid 150s, great look. If it can't, not the best of looks, but then you have earnings in two and a half weeks. Also a dividend date coming out, I believe in a week, week and a half or so. So two things to be watching out for on, on CLX. Top of the range, man, kind of. I mean, past couple of years, you know, if you draw on a, a very you know cheesy range, you're kind of towards the top of the range. So what makes you think you're going to break out? Well, market's strong. Maybe the sector gets some attention or, or the sector is strong. Then, then you can make the arguments for a continued push. However, if that if that guidance and that current isn't really there, would it be surprised? It wouldn't be super surprising if this thing were to kind of like flutter back down if the market weakens a little bit and flutter back down to like the 140s or something like that. That's just my, my thoughts. Okay. Um, Got to talk about NVDA. I mean, we always do, right? It's the hottest stock in the world, right? Everyone loves NVIDIA, right? Everyone loves NVDA. Um, broke out of the trend line this week. Was it this week? I think it was. Maybe last week. No, Monday. 
Broke off the trend line Monday. Looks to be in position for an all-time high push. All it's got to do is go like five, six bucks from here, and it's got all-time highs in the bag. We have about earnings in about a month, so you got plenty of time for that. So that looks pretty bullish if you ask me. I mean, that's just what I'm seeing. Pretty bullish if you ask me on NVIDIA with the trend line break. The trend line can't hold different story, but you'd want to see it now holding 125. I wouldn't want to see it below 125. That's what I want. That's what I'd say. Um, Tesla, kind of a gross one because, I mean, big, big volume. They have announced now that they're working on their robo taxis and stuff that's coming soon. They have earnings in about a week and a half. The thing is, they get destroyed on the announcement of that or whatever. It's about down nearly 9% on the day on Friday. So this is this was a chart that was looking kind of promising because if it can break to the upside over this high, I was like, well, we might have something here for a bigger move. And seemingly, uh, well, not seemingly, we had put in a lower high, so that fails. Generally speaking, the same general vicinity, though, as the highs over the past you know, year or two. And now it rolls back over. Really good volume support down around 187, 185, 180. That area, a little bit of a no man's land here, to be honest with you. Little volume node right here around where it's currently at, 215. Not a lot of, um, I think, clear direction. I think above once, above 260 is very interesting. Below 170, interesting. But in between, eh. You got earnings coming soon enough to where it's like, I don't think it's going to move very much until that. And that'll be the big catalyst. So then we'll have to see what happens on the back side of that. I hope that was helpful. Hope that you guys are doing great. And um, if you're looking for a new broker, Interactive Brokers, I'll link them up down below like always, as well as a link to TradingView to save $15 off any of their paid plans. We are coming up about a month and a half or so away from Black Friday. Those of you who have TradingView, who are looking to upgrade or who don't, if you're going to do so and can wait till Black Friday, do so because they have massive deals. I always upgrade mine on that at that time of year and then like just buy essentially buy enough credit to then get me out for like another year or two. That's what I usually do. Um, so links to all that stuff down below. Like always, thanks so much for watching. Maybe you're subscribing, maybe you're not. Maybe you're leaving a comment on your ticker of interest for the next video. I'm back in, in, in action. I'm not traveling for about a month. So hopefully um, we'll have maybe two week, two videos a week. That's the plan. If it's interesting. And I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.